Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be playing with the newest card kit called Starry Night. And this is a really great card kit because it has dies in it, it has a stamp set in it, and it also has an exclusive set of color burst powders from Ken Oliver. We have released some of these color bursts in the past and we have a new set in this card kit. And these are beautiful colors that go really well together to create a galaxy sky. Galaxy skies tend to be pretty dark in color when you create the background. So I've went ahead and created a couple of panels here to show you the different effects that you can achieve with these color burst powders by using all three colors, which I've done here. So I have that green color mixed with the purple and the kind of bluish color. And then I've also created a panel that just uses the blue and the purple on their own without the green included. I also used more water in this one, which kind of helps to take the pigment a little bit lighter in color and not have it so dark. So I just wanted to show you the difference between using just two of the colors and using all three colors and using a little bit less water and a little bit more. So you can kind of vary the effect that you get with these color burst powders. So for today's video, I wanted to do two different cards and I wanna show you a way to do a card where you have a nice bright white card but you're still featuring the galaxy effect that we're creating on these panels. And then I wanted to go completely opposite and show you a really dark card where we keep most of the card really dark in color. So I have a few supplies here that I'm going to use. I have a little paint palette here and I'm gently tapping in the color of the color burst into one of the little wells there. You don't wanna squeeze the bottles when you want to use this as a paint. You just kinda of wanna tap the color burst powders wherever you're gonna be applying it. This just kind of keeps the mess to a minimum. I also have a little bowl of water there as well as a watercolor brush and I have some watercolor paper. Watercolor paper usually has a more textured side and a more smooth side and I'm going to be working on the more textured side for both of these cards. So for the first card I'm completely covering the entire panel with water. This is just going to make it so that the color bursts move a lot more freely when I add them to the panel. If you take the color bursts and add them to a dry panel, you're gonna get way more concentrated color and it's gonna be a lot darker and not move as easily. So it just depends on the look that you're going for. I'm using the blue and the purple color burst for this example and I'm just kind of picking them up in the little paint palette. I'm putting water onto my paintbrush, I'm dipping it into the powders and then I'm just taking it directly to the panel. The more pigmented you want it to be, the more powder you want to pick up when you're doing the painting. If you want it a little bit more watered down, then you're just going to pick up a little bit less powder and use more water. So I set the first panel aside to dry, and now I'm going to work on the second one. So for this one, the idea I had in mind is rather than mixing the green into the galaxy sky, which I did on the sample I showed you at the beginning, I wanted to create what kind of looked like a landscape. So I'm using the greens at the very bottom to kind of create my grass area, and then I'm using the purples and the blues in the top to create kind of a textured looking sky. And I'm going back and forth with quite a bit of pigment here. I have a lot of water, but I also have a lot of that powder on my brush. I really wanna get some dark and light areas in the sky just to kind of show a lot of texture. And then I also want to have a pretty dark area where the sky and the grass meet. So you'll see I kind of keep going into that area. As I apply water and notice that it's starting to lighten up, I go in with more powder and I'm gonna actually end up adding more to my palette here because I want to have way more powder so that I can get it really nice and dark in the center. And then once I'm happy with it, I will just kind of use my paintbrush with my water and I kind of just move stuff around. I don't wanna have any harsh lines where it's gonna dry and you're going to see the separation of the colors. So I really like to go in with my water and really make sure I have a really nice blend between all of the different colors. So it is a little bit time consuming to kind of go back and forth, but I definitely think it's worth it when you see the finished result and see the finished dried piece when you're done. Once I get this panel exactly how I want it, I'm gonna set this one aside to dry and we're gonna bring in our first panel and you're gonna see here now that it's completely dried that we have a very light panel. So you can see the difference between the first one I did that had more pigment and this one which had a lot more water. So we ended up with a lighter effect. Now it's a little bit too light for what I wanna do so I am gonna go in with a little bit more color which is something that you can definitely do when you create these backgrounds. Once they dry up, if you decide that they're not quite what you're going for, you can take your colors and your water and just add more to the panel. So I did take a little bit of that powder just to bring in a touch more color. I am still wanting to keep this a little bit more muted. And then once I had that on there, I did take water and fully cover the panel once again. And that's just because I don't wanna have, like I mentioned on that other panel, areas where the water dries and has very defined lines where the new water was placed. So by adding water to the entire panel once again, it helps everything dry at the same time. I now have two completely dry panels. I did let them air dry off camera, but if you wanna speed up the process, you can definitely use a heat tool to kind of heat them up a little bit quicker. But I do find I like the result a little bit better when I let them air dry. 
So now I have some circle dies here. Any circle dies you have on hand will work, and I'm gonna create some circular elements for my card designs. So the one I have on screen here that I'm die cutting, I first die cut with the circle, and I kind of picked an area on the watercolor panel that had a lot of different color variation. And now what I'm doing is I'm just taking that same circle die that I used initially, and I'm placing it back onto the circle die cut piece to create a moon shape. I'm gonna use some repositionable tape to hold it in place and run this through my die cutting machine, and we're left with a perfectly crescent moon that we can use on our card design. I also want to include some coordinating stars, so I'm going to use the die that comes in the card kit, and I'm going to die cut a whole bunch of stars out of the rest of that background piece. I'm using the Starry Night Sentiment stamp set that comes in the kit, and I'm stamping out my sentiment with black ink, and I'm using my Misty stamping tool just in case I have to do a double stamp. I chose the You Are So Bright You Twinkle sentiment. I like how it filled up the bottom area of the card, and I really like the greeting with the design that I'm creating. When I die cut the moon shape, I ended up getting a little bit of a white core showing on the outside edge, which I really don't want. So I took an ink blending tool that already had ink on it. I didn't add any additional ink. And I just went around the outside edge of that moon in a similar color, just to kind of darken up the edges and really make it stand out on the white background. I'm now using liquid glue to go ahead and adhere the moon onto my design. And then I'm gonna take all those little stars there and I'm gonna position them all around the moon kind of in a scattered look, and then I'm gonna take that same glue pen and a pair of tweezers, since these are so small, and I'm just going to add dots of glue and then place the little stars on top and let them fully dry. Once I have the stars on there, I wanna add a lot of sparkles, so I'm taking some silver stickles and I'm going around the whole area and I'm just dotting little areas with those stickles. I'm doing some a little bit bigger and some smaller. I just wanna really fill in the area and give this card a lot of sparkle and shine and make it look like we have a galaxy sky in the background. This card shows a great way to use the galaxy backgrounds that you can create, but to still be able to create a really bright card with a lot of white space, because you don't necessarily always have to use an entire background piece. You can just die cut certain areas from it and create a design like this where we're just highlighting some of it. So I went ahead and filled in that whole area. I did end up die cutting a few more stars just to really fill it up. And I did end up going back in with a little bit more stickles to really fill that area. Now to add a little bit of detail to the moon, since it looks a little bit plain with all of the glitter that we have going on around it, I decided to use my white gel pen and add a bunch of white dots to this to make it look like there were stars kind of overlapping the moon. So I'm just gonna quickly go around and add these little white dots. Another way you could do this is to take your moon before you adhere it to your card and add white paint splatters to it and let them completely dry and then add your moon onto your card when it's finished. That will give you a more random look to your star since the paint splatter is a little bit less controlled than the white gel pen. So now I'm taking my finished panel, which measures four inches by five and a quarter, and I'm adding it to the blue card base, which is an A2 size card measuring four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And this first card is complete. We have this really pretty card where we have all of the sparkle and shine, and we've used that galaxy background, but in small amounts so that we don't have so much darkness on the card, and we have a lot of bright white space. So moving on to the second card, I had initially cut out a circle from the panel that I had created and I did not like it at all. I tried to put it onto a panel. I was not loving how it looked. You can see here, this is the panel I originally created. So I decided to recreate that same panel with the same colors, same effect, exactly what I did at the beginning, but I'm gonna change my idea and use way more of this panel than I had originally intended. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a tree here and I'm using the Trio of Trees stamp set. You can use any tree, you could use a triangle shape, pretty much anything, because we just wanna create the illusion of silhouetted trees in the background. And I'm just gonna stamp a bunch of these, overlapping them in the background with black ink. And it's just gonna really enforce that nighttime look that we're going for, but it's gonna add a little bit of detail to the background since it is pretty plain with just the colors. I love a card with a lot of white space, so I really love the design of the first card, but I have to say this background, I absolutely love. It just kind of came together perfectly. I love the green at the bottom. I love the lighter purple kind of in the middle, and then the darker bluish purple at the top, and then we have some darkness mixed with lighter colors to really give a lot of texture to that night sky. So on this one for the sentiment, I wanted to stamp the sentiment directly onto the panel. I'm gonna heat emboss it with white embossing powder. You just wanna make sure when you do this that all of your background is completely dry because if it's a little bit wet at all, the embossing powder is gonna stick all over and you're gonna end up with a little bit of a mess. So you wanna have that completely dry and then you can go ahead and stamp your sentiment with Versamark ink, which is what I did. And then I added white embossing powder and fully heat set that. 
I then added the panel, which I had die cut with a stitch rectangle die to a piece of white cardstock just to really make it pop on the background. And then I added it to a dark blue card base. This is once again an A2 size card measuring four and a quarter by five and a half. And now we're gonna finish off the card and this is my favorite part of this design. I wanna add star detail to the entire background in the night sky. So I have my white gel pen once again and I'm gonna go through and add white dots all over this entire background. I'm making sure to concentrate a lot of the white dots around the trees, especially right above where the green ends and the sky starts. I really wanna make it look like there's a bunch of stars in the distance. So I'm putting little tiny dots around all of the trees. Up in the top area of the sky, I'm putting larger dots to make it look like some of the stars are closer up. And then I'm filling in all of the area around them with a bunch of really small dots as well. And it's so cool to watch as I'm adding them, look at the scene come to life and see that beautiful starry sky emerge from that background that we created. So just by starting with a simple watercolor background, we have created this beautiful scene where we have a night sky, we have visible grass or ground area, and then we have those silhouetted trees in the background. So here's both cards side by side. You can see I achieved two completely different looks by using the full panel on one card. I get a lot more of a dark look with those beautiful stars in the background. And then by using just portions of the die cut piece, I was able to get a lighter look with a lot of white space. So it just kind of depends on how you use the elements. There are so many different ways that you can use the stamps and dies in this set. I hope today's video gave you some ideas and I can't wait to see what you guys create. As always, I appreciate you being here for another video and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks so much for watching.